Hello everyone, this is Firoz Nadav. In this video, we will see design of isolated footing problem number one. In the previous video, uh, I have explained you the steps involved in the design of footing. I recommend you to see that video before this video. I will share the link of that video in the description box. So in that video, you will see the steps involved in the design of footing and you will also see the derivation of the formulas. But here directly I will use the formula, I will not derive the formula because already I have derived the formula in the previous video. Here we will see how to apply those formulas in solving the problem. Okay, So we will see the problem statement, design a RCC uh, reinforced concrete footing for rectangle column of section 300 mm by 500 mm reinforced with 6 bars of 20 mm diameter carrying an axial load of 1500 kN. The safe bearing capacity of the soil is 185 kiloton per meter square okay so superficially we will see what are the steps involved in the design of footing so first we have to find the area of the footing and then we have to set the dimensions of the footing dimensions of the footing depends on the dimensions of the column if the column is a square column then we have to set square footing if the column is a rectangular column then we have to go for rectangular footing okay Okay, so second, step number two is soil pressure. When the footing is rested on the soil, soil will react. It will uh, create some upward pressure on the footing. So what is the magnitude of that upward pressure? We have to calculate in step number two. Step number three is about depth of the footing. Normally, you see depth of the footing is calculated based on three criteria, bending moment, uh, one-way shear and two-way shear. So what we will do? Most of the time, you will, you will get depth of the footing based on one-way shear, okay? So, we will find the depth of the footing based on one-way shear and we will check the depth of the footing, whatever depth of the footing we will get with respect to one-way shear, uh, we have to check that depth with respect to bending moment criteria and we will also check that depth with respect to two-way shear criteria. So, what is the point? The point is that whatever depth you will get with respect to one-way shear, it has to satisfy the bending moment criteria it also has to satisfy to a shear criteria okay step number six is area of reinforcement in footing you see the reinforcements are provided in the x direction as well as in the y direction and we will also seek the guidance given by is456 in laying the reinforcement in the footing step number seven is about development length so whatever dimensions we have provided in the footing so it is the the it is available for the development length or not that check we have to make okay now we will see the design of the footing step number one is about the size of the footing uh, here we have to find the area of the footing first we know the formula of the area total service load total service load means the load from the column plus self weight of the footing total service load divided by safe bearing capacity of the soil uh, P is the load from the column plus 10% of P. Now you see uh, the dimension of the footing is not yet decided. So we cannot find the self weight of the footing. What we have to do, we have to assume some percentage of columns load as self weight of the footing. Like 10% of columns load as self weight of the footing. Okay, so uh, this is coming. So finally it is 1.1 P divided by SBC. P value is given in the problem. That is 1500 kN. Even SBC is given. You have to put the value of P and SBC. You will get 8.9 meter square. You can take up to 9 meter square. Now, area required is 9 meter square. After getting the area, we have to set the dimensions of the footing. Uh, this is the area of the column. The column is a rectangular column. L is the length of the column, whereas B is the width of the column. So, the length of the footing should be in proportional to the length of the column. Even the width of the footing should be proportional to the width of the column. So I told you when you have a rectangular column, we have to provide rectangular footing, but that rectangular footing should be in proportional to the rectangular column. So how to decide the proportional dimensions, I will tell you. Now you see you have to take the dimensions of the column and you have to take the initial number of length to decide length of the footing. Okay, so length of the footing is 5x, whereas width of the footing, you have to take the initial number of width of the column. The width of the footing is 3 into x. Now, the area required is 9 meter square. You can multiply L length of length into breadth equal to 9 meter square. 
where l is 5x b is 3x equal to 9 by equating this you will get the value of x which is 0.77 meter and after this you can find the length of the footing length of the footing is phi into x put the value of x you will get length of the footing equal to 3.85 meter but you can provide 4 meter of length you can increase the length but not you, can, you cannot make less than 3.85 you have to increase the length of the footing and width of the footing you see it is 3 into x put the value of x the width of the footing will be 2.3 you cannot provide 2.3 you can make it up to 2.5 meter the the size of the footing is 4 meter by 2.5 meter so in this way you have to provide you have to set the dimensions of the rectangular footing step number two is about the calculation of upward pressure it is also known as soil pressure so you see column is rested on the footing and footing is rested on the soil uh, this is the ground level which is not correct you can ignore it ground level is well above the footing okay so you can ignore this so when the footing is rested on the soil there is some upward pressure from the soil which is acting over the entire area of the footing okay it is denoted by q u since it is acting over the entire area of the footing uh, the unit of the upward pressure is kilonewton per meter square now how to find q u we have the formula 1.5 p where p is columns load and one point we are multiplying 1.5 to make it factored load okay to make it factored load or ultimate load so 1.5 p divided by area of the footing provided in the step number one we have provided the area of the footing we just have to substitute the we know the value of p we know the what area we have provided q u equal to 2 to 5 kilonewton per meter square step number three is about finding depth of the footing so i told you we will find the depth of the footing based on one way shear criteria and we will check it for uh, the bending moment criteria and two way shear okay so this is the formula that we have to find the depth of the footing based on one way shear uh, in order to see the derivation of this formula you have to refer to the previous video uh, steps involved in the design of footing which will be given in description box okay so if you want to see the derivation of it you have to refer to the video given in description box okay so you see uh, in this formula everything is known to us except small d and tau c and small, small d we need to find whereas tau c we have to get the value of tau c from is 456 table number 19 page number 73 and you see tau c depends on two value it depends on grade of concrete and percentage of steel whereas grade of concrete it will be given to you in the problem in this problem they have given m20 grade concrete as far as percentage of steel is concerned we don't know because we have not yet calculated the area of steel in the footing so you see what we have to do in this case see the normal range of percentage of steel in the footing is from 0.2 to 0.25 so you can assume any value between those two value or you can assume those values so we'll assume that the percentage of steel in the footing is 0.25 percent okay so based on m20 grade concrete and 0.25 percentage of steel tau c value comes to 0.36 newton per mm square okay so you see again to the formula b b get cancelled we have to put the value of tau c which is in newton per mm square q u is uh, 2 to 5 kilo newton per meter square we cannot take this value okay so we have to convert kilo newton per meter square into newton per mm square so this is the value of q u in kilo newton per meter square we have to convert that into newton per mm square so kilo newton is converted into newton uh, by multiplying 10 to the power 3 and mm uh, meter square is converted into mm square by dividing it by 1000 square okay so this is the value that we are getting q equal to 0.225 newton per mm square substitute all the value capital l is the length of the footing in mm small l is length of the column in mm so by solving this equation small d will come to 673 mm you can take it as 675 based on one way shear okay now you can assume 75 mm as effective curve because you also have to provide the overall depth of the footing okay so overall depth is small d plus effective cover which comes to 750 mm this is your overall depth of the footing d value is 675 mm with respect to one way shear now what we have to do we have to make the check 
whatever depth we have provided whether it satisfy the bending moment criteria and also it has to satisfy the two way shear criteria that check we have to make okay step number 4 is about checking the whatever depth we have provided with respect to bending moment criteria in the check what we will do we will find the bending moment at the critical section and at the same time we will also find MULI okay if bending moment is less than MULI then we can say that whatever depth we have provided it is okay with respect to bending moment criteria okay so how to find bending moment at the critical section so this is a formula that we have Again, if you want to refer the derivation of this formula, uh, refer to video in the description box. You will get the derivation of this formula. Just put the value QU is, uh, you have calculated Q, which is soil pressure, B is width of the footing, capital L minus small l <coughs> divided by 2. Uh, bending moment at the critical section is 861.32 kiloton meter. Okay. MULIM, it depends on grade of steel. So they will give you the grade of steel. In this problem, they have given Fe415 as a grade of steel. Okay, for Fe415, MULIM is equal to 0.138 FCK BD square. FCK depends on grade of concrete. For M20, FCK is 20. B is width of the footing. Okay, and D we already we have provided the D uh, that is 675. Okay, so MULIM equal to 3143.81 kiloton meter, which is more than 861.32 and now we can say the depth is okay with respect to bending moment criteria step number five in step number five we have to check the depth with respect to two-way shear punching shear what check we have to do we have to find the uh, punching shear stress and then permissible shear stress if punching shear stress is less than permissible shear stress then we can say that whatever depth we have provided it is okay with respect to two way shear how to find punching shear stress we have this formula again if you want to see the derivation of this formula you have to go to that video given in the description box you will get the derivation of this formula how this formula has been derived here you just note that uh, what what is there in the formula and you just have to put the values of those things in the formula and you will get uh, the punching shear stress that is 0 0.686 newton per mm square now find permissible shear stress tau c equal to 0.25 under root fck fck depends on grade of concrete that is 20 newton per mm square uh, tau c value comes to 1.11 newton per mm square which is higher than punching shear stress now you can say whatever depth we have provided it is very much okay with respect to two-way shear okay so the reinforcement part and other part you will see in the next video thank you very much for watching this video